Welcome to the 2010 Team America Rocketry Challenge. Here upon a, well, let's call it a field of battle, a hundred select teams from around the country, starting with 669, I think was the total count before this whole thing came together. A hundred teams have come together to prove who's the best amateur rocketry team from a group of middle and high school selectees from all over the country. It is an extraordinarily creative event. The tasks are simple until you actually have to do them. 825 feet of altitude, 40 to 45 seconds in duration, and by the way, you've got a payload of a raw egg that has to make it back to Earth without turning into an omelet. Tremendous challenges, tremendous passion, and an absolutely tremendous event have combined together to make TARC 2010 something that has amazed us and it thrilled us and made for sure that we're never going to miss this event again. Come along with Aero News and Aero TV as we take a look at TARC 2010 and a little clue as to why, for those of you who are concerned about the youth of America, as far as we're concerned from what we're seeing here, you've got nothing to worry about. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Let's go back to the very beginning. I mean, this is a huge undertaking. So what bit of insanity brought this up to begin with? I mean, where did this start and who do we blame? <laughs> um, AIA created the Team America Rocketry Challenge back in 2003, initially just as a one-time celebration of the centennial of flight. But the response was so great after the first year that we decided to have an annual event and AIA partnered with the National Association of Rocketry and NASA and the Department of Defense and decided to make it an annual competition to encourage students to study math and science and pursue careers in aerospace. Scott, on the uh, field, uh, field of battle, if you will, for the 2010 uh, Team America Rocketry Challenge, the one thing, the one word to me that really espouses what's happening here is passion. Well, these kids are all very passionate about this and that was the whole objective of the program, is to get a bunch of kids, bright kids engaged, uh, they're very drawn. It's, it's exciting technology. It's uh, a lot of fun to launch these things. Uh, and more than that for us, it really kind of hopefully spins off, not just a passion for the rocket event, but math and science and an awful lot of these kids that come out of this, uh, many of whom didn't really know or think about careers in, in math or science-related kind of uh, degrees, you know, enjoy doing it and, and look at it and say, geez, I go to college, do the right thing, I get paid for having this much fun. So I think it's uh, something that we hope keeps on rolling because every year you see new class of kids coming through it and there is a lot of passion and excitement about it. What are you seeing here in regards to the, the tasks that have been set, uh, set forth here? Is this, uh, is this a kind of problem solving that really leads to the uh, defining of a role that somebody's going to use to define their career? It's not only problem solving with an engineering bent, but it's also working collaboratively in, in teamwork, which is one of the things that's very hard in engineering to capture, particularly at the, at the high school level, right, where people are used to working on homework by themselves, right? As you, the older you get, the further you get into this, you realize that none of, no, no big aerospace activity is an individual activity at all. It's hugely collaborative. Teams of people, large organizations, even countries working together like the, on the International Space Station. And the neat thing about this is it not only pulls you right into the engineering, makes you do the science, the math, but it also drives home the collaborative part early on.
If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. It's been an amazing day. Over 120 launches, tremendous excitement, lots of fun, and I gotta tell you, the kids are just over the moon in more ways than one. But while we've focused mostly on the kids here today who've just had a tremendous time and proven to one and all that, yeah, they're made of the right stuff. At the same time, let me talk a little bit about the mentors. Let me talk about the folks who brought this together. The National Association of Rocketry, AIA, these folks have tremendous passion. They're trying to guide our youth into futures and careers that can mean many things to this nation. And based on what you've seen here, I hope you agree with me that, by and large, we're in pretty good hands. For the Aero News Network and for Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.